My name is Kavli Dalgazar. Uh, I'm a professor at the University of uh, Ontario, and I have the answer for the question that the president has posted at the beginning, the World Wide Web. So the World Wide Web, or WWW, was invented in 1989. It was originally developed to enable information sharing between scientists around the world. In just a few years, the web has become central to the development of the information age. Billions of people around the world use it as a primary tool to communicate and interact. The number of users grew up from 16 million in 1996 to 4 billion in 2018. 55% of the entire world population using the internet for almost seven hours a day. In 2010, another wave of disruptive technology was born and called Internet of Things, or in short, IoT. IoT embeds sensors and actuators in physical devices so they can talk to us. So your fridge will talk to your grocery store to replenish items that are running out of stock. Your AC will turn on when you are close to home. The IoT market is set to rise from 157 billion in 2016 to almost 500 billion in 2020. We spend on technology because we love technology. Technology has changed the way we live, the way we carry out our everyday business. Imagine you wake up in the morning. The moment you, you get off your bed, then the car starts to warm up for you. The coffee maker starts to make your favorite coffee of the day. The school bus sends you a notification, I'm two minutes away. Your day schedule starts to pop up in the mirror as you brush your teeth. You have, you have a meeting in 30 minutes. Hurry up, dude. <laughs> as you walk out of your home, the door locks behind you. The light shuts off. The AC turns to a power-saving mode. And then the car starts to, as, as you walk out, the car starts to unlock and greet you by name, saying, hello, Mr. Human. The temperature inside you, inside the car, is adjusted to your comfort level. You sit in the seat, the car displays a map of the location of your next meeting, and say, take another route because your, your normal route will have a 20 minutes delay because it was congested. And it gives you information about the parking spots. Your meeting room is ready, sir, the phone says. Jack is on his way. We'll make it on time. Philip will be late two minutes. Susan is already there. You will have time to grab a coffee on the, on the way from your favorite shop because lineup is short and service time is two minutes. And you whisper to yourself, wow, this is impressive. This would not be possible without sharing my data. So with all these excitements, widespread adoption and the incredible opportunity that technology would enable also comes a fear. Fear for privacy invasion. Because we are so incredibly obsessed with technology, we tend to share too much in the public domain than we're supposed to. How many times do we look into permissions we allow for applications we download on our phone? Why a QR code application requests access to my contact list? Why an application requires to analyze my email messages on my behalf? Why my smart TV wants to record conversation with my family in our living room? Never talk to your wife again in front of your TV <laughs> for privacy purposes. We allow utility company to install smart meters to get fine-grained usage of our utility hoping that we can get better service and save money. But did you know that this information can reveal too much about your daily habits? They can know whether you are at home or not. They can know whether you have a guest last, last night or not. They can even know how much time you take a shower every day. And most likely you had diarrhea last night because you were flushing the, the toilet too much. So we have to believe that there is no free service. We always pay the price. Sometimes we know that what the price is, and many times we don't. Sometimes we provide consent to collect data on our behalf, 
and most of the times we don't. Over the past year, we have seen many privacy violations. Companies selling a mailing list, compromising user, user data, and voluntarily providing access to user profile for target advertisement. So it comes at no surprise when you receive an advertisement relevant to your keyword search last night or to, the, to your most private interest that you never shared with anyone except the Google. And most likely it would be relevant to your location and you ask yourself, how do you know this? Smart city at, at, at the doorsteps. Millions of devices will be deployed around us and we collect all kinds of information, more than we ever think of. We will soon encounter them. So privacy is a shared responsibility between technology, technologists, and us. Technology should empower people to understand what kind of data they share, with whom they share it, understand what really mean to share certain kind of data, and what are the risks if this data is misused. Technologists also have to receive proper training on the ethics of using private data and be considerate when they design systems about people privacy, when they, when they design systems or applications. On the other hand, we people should exercise extreme caution when we share information with others. My mom used to tell me, share your secret with no one if you would like to keep it secret. So I have no Facebook account, I have no Twitter account, and I have no Instagram account, and I have no secret to share with you. <laughs> so there is too much evil in technology as much as there is good. No one will take care of our privacy if we don't. We people are hungry for technology. We will never stop building technology that offer more convenience and better quality of life. So, but we have to stop and ask ourselves, are we building a future of technology based on what makes us magnificent to human being, or we are build building a future of human glory with magnificent technology? <laughs> we need to focus on what makes us happy and prioritize our attention and development of technology to this direction. So stay safe, stay private.